G'day guys, there's been a load of updates to the custom multi-core firmware for the GB300 and SF2000 handhelds in the last few weeks. So let's take a look and see what's new. At the time of filming, the latest multi-core version available is version 0.4.5. Starting off, we have a highly optimized Commodore 64 emulator called Frodo, which should make most games fully playable. To use it, you just have to put your Commodore 64 games inside the C64F folder under ROMs on the SD card, and then run the make ROMs list script either on a PC or on the device itself using the new JS2000 program. If you try and run a Commodore 64 game using this new emulator, and it just loads to basic like it has here, you can simply press start to continue loading the actual game. If you've had a play around with Commodore 64 emulation on these handhelds before, then the first thing you'll notice is the massive speed increase when trying to load a game. In this core, pressing B brings up the on-screen keyboard. Use the D-pad to select the character and press A to enter it. With most games, you want to press spacebar. You can see Ghost and Goblins runs at full speed and there is also sound. There has also been some massive changes to the new JavaScript 2000 core, adding a ton of new functions and commands. We won't go too in detail today, but needless to say, we should see some very cool programs written in it in the future. Another massive improvement is the addition of fake real-time clock support for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, which is amazing for old Pokemon and Harvest Moon games. While you are playing the games themselves, time tracks normally as you would expect. However, when not playing and the system is powered off, Time doesn't advance since the GB300 and SF2000 lack physical real-time clocks. The workaround for this is an option to automatically advance the virtual real-time clock by however many hours you set every time you power off the system. You can also manually change the time using the new JS2000 script. You can find the real-time clock script in the games list under the user and ROM settings menu. Just press A and you want to go down to JS2000 RTC settings manager. Just press A on it. So here it is here. You press L and R to toggle between Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advanced. And the first option enables or disables the fake RTC. You just press A to toggle it. Going down once, you can manually add or remove time to the fake RTC. Pressing A increases it by 1 hour, B by 10 minutes, X decreases it by 1 hour, and Y decreases it by 10 minutes. The last option is how long you want time to skip every time you reboot the system. By default, it's set to 4 hours on the Game Boy Advanced, and 6 hours on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Make sure to press Start to save your changes. You can exit out just by pressing start and select like you normally would. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work right for me with Gen 2 Pokemon. Instead of advancing the clock, it clears the real-time clock data each time the game is opened. You can see here if I press A, it says time not set. If I go to continue, it tells me the clock may be wrong and to reset the time. This isn't too bad in itself since you would normally have to use a button combo and then a password to reset this clock. The Gambat core was also updated with rewind support. I had no idea something like this was even possible on such a low-end device. While in any Game Boy or Game Boy Color game, using the updated Gambat Core, you can simply hold B and select to rewind time. This is really handy for platformers like Mega Man and Mario, but could also be used in RPGs like Pokemon to try and change the RNG for an attack if you are low on health. The last major update I wanted to show off today is probably my favorite, and that's fast forward and rewind support in NES games using the NES Q Core. It functions the same as in the updated Gambat Core, only with different hotkeys. You can toggle fast forward between standard speed, 2x speed, and 4x speed by holding select and pressing R. Holding select and L will instead rewind time, which is once again amazing for platformers or just really hard games like Battletoads. Updating to the latest multi-core release is as easy as downloading the latest release from the GitHub page, extracting it, and copying everything inside the SD card folder to your GB300 or SF2000's SD card, making sure to overwrite the old files. I have made a video on this before, so I will link that along with the multi-core releases page down in the description below. Overall, this is an extremely impressive update, and I'm a huge fan of being able to fast forward in NES games, especially to skip Mega Man 2's Get Your Weapons Ready For screen. The ability to rewind time in Game Boy and NES games is also a really awesome and impressive quality of life feature that I didn't even think was possible on these handhelds. Pokemon fans will love the real-time clock update, but as mentioned, it is broken for me at the moment. Being able to reset the time without having to use the usual button combo and password is pretty handy though. Commodore 64 games are also incredibly fast to load now, and most run at nearly full speed. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.